Now I will be going to present you about the professional assessment of engineering professionals in England and Singapore. So England and Singapore are engineering professional engineering assessment system. I will be explaining that. Those information are prepared and presented by the Dr. Saman Kiong. He is the president of the Singapore Institute of Engineering and Technologies. Dr. Sang accepted my invitation to contribute the lecture in the training. But uh, unfortunately, uh, he, uh, due to the unforeseen un un circumstances, he could not come to Myanmar. So that uh, on behalf of him, uh, I present uh, his uh, PowerPoint presentation. So those presentation PowerPoints are prepared by the Dr. Saman Kiong. So he could not come to the Myanmar due to the unforeseen circumstances. Uh, this is the reason uh, I uh, present the those information on behalf of him. So before the presentation, I would like to uh, introduce you the Dr. Saman Kiong. Dr. Saman Kiong is a president of the Singapore uh, Institute of Engineering and Technologies. His academy is a uh, received. Uh, he received uh, his uh, basic engineering knowledge at the University of Melbourne, and uh, did his uh, postgraduate studies in engineering at the National University of Singapore and the Nanyang Technological University in uh, Singapore. He also uh, obtained uh, uh, many uh, professional uh, qualifications. The certification qualifications are a chartered engineer UK in a civil engineering discipline, materials production, chartered engineer Ireland, chartered professional engineer Australia, registered engineer Papua New Guinea, chartered Sabera UK, chartered construction manager UK, chartered building engineer UK, chartered environmentalist UK, chartered mathematician UK, and chartered site UK, and chartered quality uh, professional UK. Who are say, uh, most significant uh, achievement of the uh, Mr. Sang's uh, uh, engineers and career. So Mr. Sang is uh, very interested in this uh, engineering education system throughout the his life. He is uh, founded the uh, Singapore Institute of Engineering Technologies. He is uh, one of the founder member and also that he would like to uh, contribute the, his uh, professional skill for the Myanmar engineering uh, development. So I start the present the his our presentation. So the outline of the presentation includes the introduction, a general criteria, England, the CM Charter Engineer Standard, and the Singapore's uh, professional engineer P requirements, and the sign useful links. Those are the major categories included in the presentation. So before uh, I make the presentation, uh, I would like to uh, go through the Technical achievement of the engineering profession. A Golden Gate Bridge is, is founded in the 1933 to 1937. It is one of the very excellent engineering examples in the United States of America. So this is the I show the in the diagram you can see about the information about the Golden Gate. But those engineers who survey the Golden Gate Bridge is a great engineer in the century. Uh, similarly, sir. Uh, this is uh, not uh, his mid-bias of the war at the Golden Gate is in the, in the United States. And also the South is his mid-bias. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is also the one of the very big uh, uh, achievement of the engineering. So Sydney Harbour Bridge was uh, uh, constructed, uh, construction began in 1923 and then completed in the 1932. So as you see in the this uh, diagram, this is about the uh, uh, figure of the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridges. So the detailed technical information are the City Harbour Bridge and the eight road lanes, two rail tracks, one British yards away and a one side away. Uh, they are, uh, the bridge is uh, constructed to cross uh, Port Jackson in the Sydney Harbour and also located in the Sydney Australia and the design is uh, through the Arts Bridge and the total length is a uh, 1149 meter or 3770 feet and the width is a uh, 49 meter a height is 132 meter and a longest space is a 503 meter. A clearance below is a 49 meter. Construction begin in the 28th July 1923 and the construction ended in the 19th January 1932. Over that in the 90s, uh, 19 March 1932. So, 1932. So, this is for some technical details on the Sydney Arbor Bridge. So, why I present the 
this uh, information is those are the example of the, the big engineering achievement on the wall so this is where details are construction some plan of the why how the engineers Sydney Harbour Bridge uh, constructed uh, and near the hundred years ago so them so those are the construction and diagram you can see on here and similarly are not only are engineering achievements are not only limited to the uh, industrial country in Asia in ASEAN country the Sultan Adru Harlem's uh, Madzam's uh, Shah Bridge this is uh, in, in, uh, in the uh, Penang so this is the second bridge of the Penang this is located in uh, Malaysia this is a uh, one of the uh, a very big achievement in the ASEAN the engineering profession. So those are the example of the ASEAN engineer who constructed the very sacrificial uh, and very excellent uh, construction uh, work. How they can do it? Because uh, they are very trained, they are very competent. Technically, professionally, academically, they learned a lot and they got a very experienced uh, engineer, uh, a great engineers. Therefore, that they can wear or design the very sacrificial and very excellent achievement of the, the wars uh, engineering uh, examples. So, this is for us uh, uh, today information about the uh, Sudan Adu Hasanim uh, Madrizan Shah Bridge. Okay, so this is uh, engineering uh, very achievement. So, the, this, uh, the new generation of engineer need to be uh, competent because of the engineering is a ever uh, uh, developing uh, profession. So more and more a new generation need to have a uh, more competency. Therefore, the, the living standard and the development of the, the whole world uh, can be uh, made at and it can be uh, improved. So engineer registrations are a very important aspect to maintain the competency of the engineer. So the, now that I'm talking about the why register. What is a competence? What is a commitment and regulation standards? Those are the important aspects in engineering registration. Why the people need to register as an engineer? What is the meaning of the competence? What is the commitment of the engineer to what the, the host country and the, the host of communities? And also the registration standards. How the industry is regulated by means of the registration standards? Those things will be uh, explained. That. Why register? The reason to register is to ensure the current and the future safeguarding the society. So safeguarding the society is a very important aspect because of the engineer, the ethics, engineer competency are for the safeguarding the society. A, a commitment to the professional standards. So the professional standards are the governing the whole professional. So that all the professional people has to follow, have to follow the professional standards. So they must have the commitment to professional standards. Commitment to the continuing professional development, CBD. Because the technique is ever changing, voice is ever changing. Therefore the competency standards need to be maintained as so the engineer cannot stop at the one step they have to be ever in need to improve the competency standard and that they are need to be governed by the professional code of the conduct. So professional code of conduct is a very important aspect of the engineering of profession. Why is a competent? The definition of competent is the ability to carry out a task to an effective standard. So the engineer must have the ability to carry out a task to an effective standard so the standard need to be uh, developed by the relevant uh, engineering uh, professional bodies. The engineer must have the, the right level of knowledge, understanding and skill and a professional attitude. Therefore, they, they are the, so many fields of the engineering, electrical, mechanical, civil, electronic, mining, uh, chemical. Uh, Though engineer must have an uh, appropriate uh, level of knowledge in uh, their job, they need to understand the engineering uh, fundamental as well as a technical approach. They must have a skill to do the tax and they must have a professional attitude to provide a safe governing and a safe environment of the living standards uh, for the, the whole uh, uh, communities. So they need to also um, maintain the professional attitude. They need to uh, maintain the, their way to uh, sustain the the whole uh, environment this uh, the requirements this, the whole uh, environment that aspects what is a commitment the meaning of commitment is a, a personal and a professional commitment 
to the society, their profession, and the environment. It set values and behaviors that we maintain and enhance the reputation of the profession. So the profession engineer need to have much have a commitment to safeguard the uh, benefit of the society and safety of the society and as well as their profession and also the environment. Environment is a very important aspect. When the environmental disaster happen, it will be very uh, negative impact and a very impact to the, the whole country and the whole nation. So the issue of the uh, engineer need to be ever concerned with the how their action can uh, adversely uh, impact on the environment. So this is the environment that concern is uh, very important for the engineer. And self value of the behavior, engineer must have the behavior honestly, maintain it and enhance the reputation of the profession. Because uh, why engineer do the uh, problem, uh, all the engineer in workforce uh, reputation can be undermined. And uh, in the view of the public, uh, public uh, uh, public on the public views and their whole profession uh, can be uh, devalued. So the uh, engineer need to uh, maintain their value and their behaviors so that the, uh, the whole uh, reputation of the profession uh, can be uh, regarded and can be uh, promoted. So the, now sir, I further talking about the registration standard. So registration standards of the England. So England is a very old uh, profession. Eh? Most of the engineering institution has been uh, founded by the England and the many countries follow the English standards. So the, in the United Kingdom, so the, there are three categories of the engineer. Engineering technician, incorporated engineer, and a chartered engineer. Engineering technicians are the technical people. Incorporated engineers are the free engineer and practical engineer. And the chartered engineers are the engineers who are responsible for the designing, the you know, leading the uh, engineering projects, and uh, who are, uh, are making the innovation in the engineering profession. So there are three uh, categories of engineers. Those engineers are uh, registered by the England uh, Engineering Council, uh, United Engineering uh, uh, United Kingdom Engineering Council, so they are registering standards. So similarly uh, in the Asia, they are the standard of the Singapore engineers. In the Singapore, there are four classes of the engineering profession. Professional Engineer PE, Registrar, Resident Engineer RE, Registrar Technical Officer RTO, Licensed Electrical Engineer, Licensed Electrical Technician, and Licensed Electrician. Those are the Singapore engineers are profession. Professional engineers are very similar to the uh, level of the PE in Myanmar. Uh, registered resident engineers are RE, so the uh, RSE. So though we also Bahamas House Myanmar also has a uh, relevance uh, profession. Registered technical officer are the, the similar to the, those who hold the AGDI as a diploma and who are working as an uh, engineering technician in a work site and licensed electrical engineer, licensed electrical technician, licensed electrician, those are uh, uh, trades that uh, qualify as an engineer. So they are, they are skills of workers, uh, trade qualifying as an engineer. So they are the full classification of the engineering profession in Singapore. So every uh, classification, they, they has a, a specific rule and a regulation. So they, uh, secondly, I talking about the general uh, criteria, general criteria for the registration. So, uh, for the engine, uh, England system, there are five general areas of the competence and equipment. So, the Society of Profe Professional Engineers of the UK, they set up the five general areas of competence and equipment. A. Knowledge and understanding. The engineer must have the engineering knowledge and understanding the engineering fundamental principle and application and the design and the development of process systems, services and products. So the engineer must have the competency in the making the engineering design and development of the production of processes and the engineering system and the providing the engineering service and the um, project uh, production, production of the engineering products. They have uh, their second uh, uh, area of the knowledge and uh, engineer must also have the responsibility, responsibility management of the leadership. So the responsibility means the engineer is uh, responsible for the the whole uh, project. PE are the responsible for the, the whole project uh, as not only the materials uh, aspect, 
but also the managing the engineering workforce to uh, provide the uh, good quality uh, output of the engineering tasks and the function. And engineers are also need to communicate. They need to communicate with their, their peers and their workers and their uh, advisor and their subordinates and also the general public. So they must have the appropriate communication and the interpersonal skills and also the professional commitment. Professional commitment means that the engineer must have the commitment to safeguard the uh, safe public safety and uh, to safeguard the environment uh, and to maintain the sustainability of the engineering the function. So the all five uh, factors are the uh, general area of the commitments and the com uh, competence and the commitments for the engineering profession. So the specific evi uh, evidence. Commitment is required in a foreign area of complying with the codes of the contracts. So engineering profession is governed by the code of the contracts. So the engineer properties are code of contracts and uh, engineering RSE code of contracts. Those are set up by the national body who govern the profession. So engineers need to comply with the code of contracts. They need to uh, uh, follow and obey the relevant uh, rule and uh, regulation and the uh, law of the engineering profession. Managing and applying the safe system of the war. Uh, safety is a uh, fast because of the uh, inju worker injury or the public uh, uh, injuries are undesirable. All the engineering work, all the standard, all the equipment, tools and materials must be the safeguard the safe. And uh, undertaking the engineering activities in a way that contribute to the sustainable development. Sustainable development is that they need to concern about the environment that are impact of uh, caused by the engineering activity. So they not only are the technical completion, they also have the responsibility to uh, concern about the uh, environment that are in bed. So undertaking the engineering activities in a way that contributes to sustainable development. So that to maintain the professional uh, competency, engineers need to uh, follow the required continuing professional uh, development, CBD. Carrying out the CBD necessary to maintain and enhance their competence. So they actively participating within the profession. So once uh, you uh, engineer are uh, classified as a PE or RSE, they need to be in the profession. They need to actively participating within the profession. So those are the commitments. So those factors are points are they, the points related to the commitment of the engineers. So they then I will be talking about the United Kingdom Charter Engineer Standard. Who are the Charter Engineers? What are the, their, uh, their responsibility? So the Charter Engineers are categorized by their ability to develop the appropriate solution to engineering problems using the new or the existing technologies through the innovation, creativity and the change. So those are basic uh, uh, capability and the uh, ability of the Charter Engineers. They, are, they must have the ability to develop the appropriate solution to the engineering problem. They, can, they have to use a new or the existing technology through the innovation, creativity and the change. So the Society of Professional Engineers, UK SPEC, is a UK standards for the professional engineering competence. So the UK standards for the professional engineering competence are UK SPEC. So, so therefore, the UK SPEC are the also the SATA. SATA is a standard and a route to the uh, registration. They are developed by the uh, England's uh, Engineering Council uh, in uh, 1984. They are amended and uh, updated in uh, 1990 and 1997. So I, here is a website to uh, view the document related to the SATA. So SATA is a the engineering registration standards are developed by the uh, United Kingdom Engineering Council. So, the academic requirement for the, those seeking the CN registration are UK qualification. The applicants who started the UK study after the 1st December 1999 will need a foreign as implying uh, qualification or the equivalent. The qualification will be the accredited bachelor degree <coughs> with the honors in engineering or technology plus appropriate accredited master degree or appropriate further learning to master level or the accredited integrators are master of engineering degree. So those are the educational requirements of the uh, CM or charter engineer. 
So the applicant who started their study before the 31st August 1999 will need an accredited bachelor degree with the honors in engineering or equivalent. So those are academic requirements of the CN registration. So the yeah, CN goddess are usually the state one, state one engineers are the uh, who certify the academic standard, state two is a uh, who fulfill the completed the uh, training uh, requirement, and state three is a uh, fully fresh as a charter engineer. So there are three kind of the uh, uh, classification in the UK system. So the, the this is the uh, academic standard requirement for the uh, CN state one registration. So the UK SBEC CN standard is uh, there are five uh, main elements. It is an uh, engineering knowledge understanding. So this is the uh, A1 A2. So engineering application P1, P2, P3 and management and leadership C1, C2, C3, C4 interpersonal skill T1, T2, T3 and obligation to the society, the professional and environment E1, E2, E3, E4. Those are the five uh, main elements of the CNs are standard. So engineering knowledge is uh, similar to the uh, engineering fundamental. So now the uh, uh, Myanmar engineering council conducting the engineering fundamental. Engineering application is similar to the engineering practice. And manager and manager leadership, so this is for the engineering master the management leadership skill. Interpersonal skill is uh, also the communication the capability. And obligation to the society, professional environment is uh, also uh, it's, uh, belong to the engineering ethics. So there are five areas of this uh, element. For required for the uh, CNs are uh, standard, UK standard. And so I further explain about the engineering knowledge and understanding. So A1 is a maintaining and extending sound theoretical approach and enabling the introduction and uh, exploration of new and advancing technology and other relevant uh, developments. So charter engineer must have the, the sound theoretical knowledge. So theoretical knowledge is an important aspect and also the new and advanced technology and other relevance and development. A2 is engaged in a creative or the innovative development of engineering technology and continuous improvement system. This means the charter engineers are need to engage and create create and innovate the development of engineering technology. New and new technologies are being developed, so the Shada engineer has responsibility to engage and uh, develop the new technology and also there's a continuous uh, improvement. So both are the engineering knowledge and understanding. And engineering application. P1 is uh, identify the potential project and opportunity. So they need to uh, identify which projects are required to uh, develop and the op engineering opportunities are need to be identified and conduct the appropriate research and undertake the design and development of the engineering uh, solution. So charter engineers need to do the engineering research work and appropriate design and development tasks and the engineering solution need to be developed by them. P3 is uh, implement the design solution and uh, evaluate the, their effectiveness. Not only is uh, implementing the design solution, they also have the, to evaluate the, their effectiveness. The whether the required sub, sub problem uh, are this, uh, fully uh, resolved or not, those things has to be uh, uh, evaluated. So they must have the appropriate uh, evaluation uh, capability in the engineering uh, application. So those are uh, in very first regarding the engineering application. And management and leadership. Management and leadership is also important because the engineers are leading the workers in the engineering project tax. So the project implementation, the master's progress are implementation and capability. They need to manage the function, plan, budget, organize, direct and control task people and resources. Those are the management function, engineering management function, and not only is that the materials are then technical management, they also are managing the people, so human resources management, the HRM, they are the, they need to lead the teams and develop the staff to meet the changing technical and the managerial needs. So the charter um, engineers are the leaders of the engineering profession, they are leading the engineering teams, they are developing the staff, so the development of staff capability, uh, guiding the staff to meet the changing technique and managerial needs. And quality management. Quality management also the important aspect. That the, they are, charter engineers are responsible for the maintaining the quality of the, their engineering production and their products and their service. Interpersonal skill. Interpersonal skill is also related to the, uh, their uh, communication capability. 
They must have a written communication. They, can, they must have the ways of prepares a report, minutes and letters. They have to communicate with the, their subordinate, their advisor, their supervisor and publish. They must have the appropriate capability in the written of communication. All the communication and presentation are also in, important. Before the projects are in design work, they need to present their design work and they need to answer the question of the public or the other sub engineers or professionals or associates and also they need to communicate with their, uh, their supervisor and personal and associate skills are also important aspect. Two, three are factors. D1, D2, D3 are the interpersonal skills need uh, requirement for the charter engineer. Obligation to the society and the profession and the environment. In this case, an uh, engineer must regard the society and must safeguard the safety of the society. So the code of contact and a professional contact is a very important aspect. They need to honestly perform their duty and responsibility. They need to honestly uh, present the uh, advantage and disadvantage regarding the, the proposed uh, engineering project. They cannot uh, hide the facts. They cannot uh, hide the facts and they cannot misuse their authority. They must have safeguard the uh, welfare of the, their subordinate, also the uh, safeguarding the public safety. Uh, safety is also an important aspect, so site safety, industrial safety, uh, occupational health and safety, rule and regulation need to be regarded and they need to uh, provide the appropriate safe uh, working environment for the, their workers. Sustainable development is uh, also an important aspect because of the sustainability of the engineering profession, sustainability of the, uh, the project work, uh, sustainability of the constructed and the completed tasks, and also the sustainable uh, approach to the preserving the nature resources. Those things are important aspect. And CBD, so that to maintain the uh, their uh, professional competency, the charter engineer need to maintain this uh, CBD activity need to take part in the CBD. CBD means uh, attending the course, uh, reading the engineering textbook, participating in the engineering workshop, or the providing the research. Those are the CBDs and uh, either uh, formal or informally. They need to uh, fulfill the certain CBDs uh, criteria within uh, their registration uh, period. So those are uh, to admit as a uh, charter engineer, uh, the people who apply for the CM need to enter the professional review. So professional review is uh, conducted by the their uh, registration authority. So they file a professional review. The so professional review is member of the IC. IC is the institution of the civil engineer UK. The professional review is a uh, made up of the following step. Production and a submission of the report. So this is the engineering report. So that in the reports are uh, the engineer need to write about the uh, specific uh, report and significance of uh, design work and project work. They have to write down about this uh, report. And after that, based on the assessing the reports, uh, they have to end up the interview. An interview where you will be required to demonstrate how you have certified the specific attributes to relevant to the grade you are applying for. So this is the all the subgrades as well, previously I talking about the A to the E, those are the competency element standard. Those need to be uh, demonstrated by me, the, the engineer who apply for the CM. And writing uh, is a side. Writing is a side uh, with the exceptional technique uh, of professional review. They also have to provide with the written is a side. So in this case, uh, the, the technical interview uh, review panel, we ask the engineer to write about the certain topics and that's all them that this topic may be the either engineering topics or the management topics. So engineer need to write about this uh, uh, the technical aspect, also the professional aspect, also they need to uh, highlight the important aspect or the engineering uh, elements, competency elements, though they need to be uh, uh, demonstrated by the writing. So those written exercises can also be provided in the technical interview. So this is for us, uh, I see Hakwada from the in England standard. So the Charter Engineer CNMIC is a member of the institution of the civil engineer. There will be some uh, people who have to follow other three steps. First step is a knowledge base, and this means there's a, a, a academic qualification. So the 
academic academically is a that is must have the, the accredited as a master of engineering in UK or the equivalent. So this is for the academic requirement for the uh, state ones are stand up. State two is an initial professional diploma as IBD. So after the graduation, the engineer must follow the professional diploma activities. And then after the they fulfill the starting standard of the uh, professional competency and they, uh, they have achieved the starting uh, period, starting uh, uh, work experience and then they have to uh, end up a professional review. So professional review is uh, CBR. So this is a professional review process. And after professional reviews, uh, we include the interview, writing the demonstration, those aspects uh, have to be the pass through. After this, a uh, CNMIC will be granted. So this is for us. Uh, a book exam or the rule of the IC so they are rule a professional examination IC also wanted the professional examination so the the rule for the professional examination is standard so those are textbook and for the further writing so they how to pass a professional examination principle for the institute of civil engineer they are the resources are published by the institution of civil engineer and also the initial professional diploma successful are professional review those are guidelines are also provided by the publication. So this is what I talking about this uh, English standard because of the Myanmar system also the base a lot of some Myanmar engineering professions are far the England standard so the I keep about I told you about the uh, England uh, CN standard. And then we talking about the Singapore. The Singapore's are uh, professional P requirement I will further explain about. In the Singapore the part way to begin the professional engineering in Singapore is the first list uh, the applicant must have the approved uh, qualification. For example, a bachelor of engineering from the uh, NUS or NDU, National University of Singapore or the Nanyang Technology uh, University. And after that, uh, fundamental engineering is uh, PEB. So PEB is a professional engineer both of the Singapore. So the engineer must sit there. FEA is, a, FEA is a, a fundamental engineering examination. And after that, the, the engineer must uh, acquire the relevant uh, experience, the relevant duration of the experience. After this, uh, professional engineer book PE exam. So this is uh, the professional engineer or engineering private exam they have to uh, uh, sit for. So the, the summary of the postgraduate professional experience and report on the, uh, on the postgraduate engineering experience. So they are they also must uh, complete it. And after this, uh, the engineer must sit the professional interview. So that upon the successful uh, completion of the professional interview PI, the professional engineer PE uh, will be granted by the PEB, a professional engineer board of the Singapore. So the professional engineer registration examination, so they are two uh, aspects. So the tools are component. Professional engineer both Singapore that uh, they set the professional engineer registration examination. So this includes the tools and major component. The first thing is the fundamental engineering examination. And second part is the practice of professional engineering examination. So the in the my uh, slide I also provide the, uh, the example of the uh, fundamental engineering examination and the practice of a professional engineering examination. After that, I will show you the that they are resources. So, they are resources example. So the every examination are two are the area of every uh, examination. The every examination is uh, included in the annex A. The format and the saver reading this and the question from the past uh, year paper. So they include that uh, uh, those are the resources. So there is resources that include the fundamental engineering examination survey, recommended reading list question from the past year paper, fundamental engineering examination electrical, recommended reading list electrical question from the past year paper electrical, fundamental engineering examination mechanical question from the past year paper mechanical. Those are the uh, included. So those are resources regarding the FE examination. So PEB. Professional engineer both of the Singapore, they publish the their fundamental the information regarding the FE examination. So those are useful link. Useful link of this are United Engineering Engineering Council, Institution of Engineer, Institution of Engineering and Technology, and so before that the Institution of Engineering and Technology is a 
previous IEE. IEE is an institution of the electrical engineer. And after this, uh, the IEE combined with the incorporated engineer and then uh, the form and use uh, institution, the margin they serve as institution, so they now uh, uh, institution of engineering and technology. Also the institution of mechanical engineer, charter institute of building and charter association of the building engineer, those are the engineering uh, uh, professional uh, uh, institution. Those institutions are authorized by the UK Engineering Council to uh, assess the engineer. So engineer need to visa um, apply for the membership of the those engineering institution and then up on the uh, completion of the appropriate professional assessment the institution nominate the engineers to be registered as a charter engineer with the UK Engineering Council. And for the Singapore, Singapore Institution of Engineer Singapore is a the institution that uh, uh, govern the uh, that uh, include the all the Singaporean engineers. Not only the Singaporean but also the overseas engineer. They are engineering professional association of the all engineer in the Singapore. It's an institution of the engineer Singapore. And since you in the city you call engineering technologies. This is for the, the SIED. SIED is the engineering technology technical engineer site engineer. They are SIED. And professional engineer board of Singapore is at uh, in, uh, the BE board. So this uh, issue the uh, engineers are licensing and registration in the Singapore. So this is for some information. So thank you for uh, your attention and uh, any question. So that uh, you can ask me the question and but uh, those are PowerPoint slides are uh, not prepared by me. So I present on behalf of the Dr. Samankau, so that all your questions I will note it and I uh, send the email to him and then uh, his, his uh, reply will be uh, shared to you. So, so the Dr. Samankau also uh, send you the message that what you do, believe in your intentions and uh, you will be the better, you better be able to pick yourself up and brush yourself off the everyday why life is not always fair, it is a manageable, it is a matter of attitude and confidence. So this is what a message from the Dr. Samangong. So there are the many sad things in life that will catch your eye, but only a few will catch your heart and pass you those. So this is a passion. So passion by the Singaporean engineer to what the Yamaha engineer. So cream from the Singapore Institute of Engineering Technologies.